Hey guys, it's Matt here. Welcome back. And today we're doing the top 10 apps of December for 2016. But before we get into it, I wanted to do a shout out to my friend Sajid. He makes these really awesome vector avatars that you're seeing right now. If you didn't already know, he is the guy that makes them for MKBHD, Mr. Who's Boss, Super Staff TV, things like that. But he made mine as well. So he's made a version one and a version two and a cover photo. So I'd like to thank him. And if you would like one of these, I'll leave the contact details down below. Okay, so cracking on into it, first one up is Brave. So this is a browser rather like Google Chrome, but it has an additional feature. It has an ad block built in. When using a website like PutLocker, you won't get any ads, which is really good. So everything's really the same. Uh, so changing tabs as well as your menu, everything is like Google Chrome, apart from this tab here, where you have options to block things as well as only access HTTPS websites. So it's really nice. There's really not a lot to it because it is just Google Chrome with this ad block, but I definitely prefer it over Chrome because I hate how ads pop up and I get loads of APKs downloading if I go to a dodgy website. And this simply gets around that. So I'm really glad I can now watch Potlucker on my phone without having all sorts of weird ads coming up. Okay, so the next app up is Button Remapper. So this is really good if you're not used to a Samsung phone and if you want to switch your recent apps with your back button. You can also do other things, for example, if you hold down one of your capacitive buttons, it will actually launch an application. So I've said it, if I hold the back button, it will open the Play Store. So it's actually pretty handy like that as well. However, I mainly use it just to switch them around. So if I want my back button on the left and the recent apps on the right, I can easily do that in this app. Now, obviously, when you're using the buttons, they won't light up because it will light up with the default back and recents. So it will be a bit confusing when using it if they did light up. I do really like it though. It's also a way of turning off the backlight as well, which is pretty neat, but I do like it. I've had no glitches with it so far and it's really good. So the next app up is Wallpaper Modder. So this one allowed me to change my home screen wallpaper to suit my personal touch a little bit more. So I changed it so that my wallpaper would be a bit more pink, a bit more Christmassy, festive, and I changed the contrast as well as the hue, the saturation, things like that. You can also blur your background, but basically I customized it to the colors that I want and then all you do to set it is hit the tick at the top or you can save it. So it simply converts your current wallpaper into one that you slightly prefer. And I really do like this. It's a great idea. And I actually make the wallpapers look much better for my personal taste using this app. So the next app up is Iconum. So I think that's how you say it, Iconum. Not too sure, but basically this is a Zooper widget add-on. So you have some widgets in here as well as wallpapers, which they're all really nice and minimal. I don't really like them as much as other wallpaper apps that I have, but they're definitely nice to have in there. But I mainly use this for the widgets. So there's some insane minimal material design widgets in here, and you can simply set this on your home screen. Now to do this, you're obviously going to have to buy Zooper widget pro, uh, or you're going to have to download it from somewhere as an APK if you don't want to pay, but I don't recommend that obviously. And uh, when once you get it, you can simply apply one of these themes and you get a really nice looking widget on your home screen. So they're very customizable. A lot of them, you can set your location and get weather and things like that, as well as some that give access to certain apps. So I can click this red button and get to Google Plus easily. I don't know why I'd want to, but I can. But yeah, it's pretty cool, very minimal, and I do like them a lot. So I definitely recommend trying it out. So up next is tech terms. So this may not interest you if you're not particularly into computing, but I do computing science and programming. And this app is basically a dictionary of all the technical jargon that you can possibly find. So you can search it or you can cycle through randomly using the dice. But I like to search things if I'm curious, like ALU, and it will simply tell me what it is, all the definition and everything I need to know. So right now I'm doing computing science as a subject. So I do use it a lot for that, but I think it's generally just interesting to find out new words and jargon all the time. So if you're definitely interested in that, check out this app, it's really good. Okay, so Tiny Core is up next. So this one allows you to monitor your CPU usage or your RAM usage, or you can even have your battery up there. So if you pay extra, you can have both to display up there. But to be honest, I don't feel the need to do that. I only really wanna show my CPU usage because I wanna know which apps are using all the CPU power of my phone. So it's really helpful for that. But I do like to just check it occasionally. And if it's too high, then I'll close the app because it's obviously just gonna drain so much battery. And if I'm out somewhere, then I don't wanna waste charge. So I kinda use it in that sense. So you can apply different ones and you can see loads of technical data of your phone if you go into the side here. That's kind of interesting and stuff, but I mainly just use it to get that bar at the top. But there's, these are some just additional things. Now there's also a customization tab at the side where you can create your own. So you can choose whichever one you want to monitor. So CPU or RAM or battery, and then you can customize the height and width of the bar. So you can make it go right across or just halfway. 
So you can also change the colors, for example, the background color and stuff like that. So I guess it's kind of cool if you want to customize it. I'm probably just going to leave it as default just because I think it looks nice and minimal like that. And it doesn't take up too much of my screen, but it's just a little bit of extra information that's added at the top. Okay, so device frame generator is up next. This one's really nice if you want a device frame around your screenshot. So if you're taking a screenshot on your device and you want to send it to someone, or maybe you want to set it as like a picture, like a thumbnail for a video or something, or if you want to post it on social media like Instagram or Google+, then you can easily insert your screenshot into a device window like this. And it looks really nice and minimal. It's a material design look. You can change your background and there's a, there's a bunch of different devices which you can choose from. But I think it looks really nice if you're just displaying your screenshot. It just kind of gives it that extra bit of uh, uniqueness. Okay, so this one up next is Taustakuvio. I have no idea why they called it that or if it's named after someone, but I like the app, so that's why I put it in this video. And it's basically a wallpaper app. So there's some really nice minimal wallpapers, and a lot of them are just really funky and cool. I just really like them. I've never seen such a diverse group of wallpapers in the one app. They are really all crazily different and I really do like them though. Some of them are really cool. For example, this lava one. Uh, I've never seen wallpapers like this in any other app. They have some really nice colors to them and I feel like it goes really nicely with my style. So that's personally why I prefer this app over many other wallpaper apps. Obviously there is some really cool ones as well like backdrops, uh, but I've already put that in a video and this is also a wallpaper app that I use. So up next is Launchify. So this is like your recent apps or frequently used apps and it will display your notification bar so you can quickly access them. It also shows on your lock screen, however you can turn that off, but basically it allows you to quickly access frequently used apps. So if you're switching between apps, you can simply swipe down and select the app that you were in last and it will jump back to it. So, so I find this really handy and I'm really used to it from using my iPhone quite a lot because when you swipe down to get your search bar, it has your recently used apps there. It gives me that little extra feature when I'm on my Samsung and I do like it, so definitely check it out if you're interested in this app. There's not too much customization options, but it's just really handy, and I, and I just like the way it feels to use. Okay, so the last app up is Europa. So this is another Zupa widget add-on that I really like. It's a bit difficult to decide which one I liked, so I kind of put both in. There's some really nice minimal material widgets in this app as well, so you do get some wallpapers as well. But the one I really like is this one here. It just looks really minimal. And I like the design, the theme of it. It just goes really nicely with my personal preference. So there's a bunch of different ones in here you can choose from. I just personally think this is my favorite. And it'll give you the temperature and the weather of your location and things like that. But I just think it's nice and minimal. It's centered in the screen. And overall, it's just really dope. So I definitely recommend this add-on. Again, you're going to have to buy Zuper Widget or download it from an APK. But to me, it's definitely worth it. I really do like the collection of widgets they have for this and the add-ons are all free. So I definitely recommend purchasing the pro version of Zupa widget. It's definitely nice. Now, if you're wondering about my wallpapers, I'll have them all uploaded to a Google Drive and there'll be a link down below in case you want to check them out. But anyway, guys, that is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching my video.